How many of you here have attended school or had the opportunity to complete it? How many of you here have felt a sense of security and safety in your own home? How many of you here have been able to follow the aspiration that you had into a job? I know, I have too, and I know some of you have, but I know, all of us know, that we're the lucky ones, because this is not the case for over 60 million adolescent girls across India. As everybody knows, India rates the highest on teenage pregnancies, and we also have 20% of child marriages before the age of 18. I was exposed to this reality when I started working in government shelter homes across India, and I saw hundreds of young adolescent girls and boys locked up in prison-like cells because they had run away from home, or they were forced into child labor, or they had been forced into sex trafficking. And I have spent the last 20 years of my life trying to understand what makes a nine-year-old girl who has never left the periphery of her school or even her home jump onto the first moving train out of there or trust a stranger. I've spent 20 years trying to understand what have we done wrong as a community, as a people, and what do we need to do right to ensure that the girls, the adolescent girls and the young people that we work with are, are feel safe, are seen, heard and celebrated. Good afternoon. I'm Shelja from an organization called Dasra, and we lead India's first multi-funder collaborative called 10 to 19 that works on adolescent health and empowerment outcomes. Really, the idea here is for us being brave enough to venture and take responsibility to ensure that we move the needle on India's goals around adolescent health outcomes. As you all know, um, India alone needs about $60 billion annually to move on five of the SDGs by 2030. While one in six people across the globe is Indian, India bears a burden of one-third of uh, fulfilling the SDG number five that is on gender equality, which means that if we internally, as a country, are able to move the outcomes around gender equality and social development, then we're going to have massive implications um, internationally and globally. And therefore, 10 to 19 has learned from its experience and ventured on to work across the few learnings that we have had, and I'd love to share that with you. One. It's very important to catalyze collaborative funding. What does that really mean? We look at bringing, bringing in all kinds of funders, high net worth individuals, corporates, family foundations, multilateral agencies, and ensuring that they fund the same set of outcomes. And not only different types of funders, but different colors and needs of funding. And by that I mean that looking at health, employability, uh, advocacy, bringing it all together, you know, really looking at not cutting up the girl into pieces and saying, okay, for SRHR, for, you know, let's fund the outcomes around the uterus, um, let's look at um, education and the brain. Let's look at the girl holistically as a whole. Second, let's ensure that we support our civil society partners, the nonprofits that we fund beyond just technical programming on the ground and really build them up as institutions. Let's not fragment them up and say, we'll only fund a piece of your work. We don't care where you get your salaries from. We don't care where evaluation is funded. We look at them as complete partners in their communities and we push to enable them to do whatever it takes. And thirdly, I think it's very important, and this is a converted audience, but I must say it, we need to look at local solutions. We need to ensure we use local business intelligence, uh, what the communities are saying, what the girls are saying at the center of our approaches. So looking at negotiating with your funder when they are floating RFPs that fulfill the mandates of their boards, of their organizations, but really pushing them to look at what the country's priorities are, what the community outcomes are and supporting that and I think looking at these three pieces is really where we see that if we drive um, the pursuit of this movement if we're able to advocate for aggregation if we're able to create collaboration if we're able to power partnerships then India and countries like India and the global south will begin solving their own problems nonprofits will develop their own outcomes Communities will realize their own potential, 
and the adolescent girl will own her own future. Thank you.